Hi everyone, welcome back to the Ruby Legacy channel. Today I'll be doing another video for the channel. Last week I did a retro season review for Bell Mains 1988 New South Wales Ruby League season. Tonight I'll be looking back at Illawarra Steelers 1992 New South Wales Ruby League season. There is a playlist of these videos, go and check it out. There's probably about 10 or 20 of these. But today we're going to be focusing on Illawarra Steelers in 1992. Illawarra coming into the competition in 1982, however, their first nine year in the New South Wales Rugby League was not very successful. The club had failed to make the finals in any of the seasons that they competed in, and they finished with the wooden spoon three times before 1992. However, in 1991, the club showed a bit of improvement, finishing eighth on the table and only missing the top five by two competition points. In 1992, the club had their best ever season, finishing third on the table. They were coached by Graham Murray. The biggest ever crowd they got was 17,469 against St George in round nine. The average home crowd for the year was just under 14,000. Ryan Girdler was the top point scorer with 122 points. And Alan McIndoe was the top try scorer with 10 tries. The 1992 season got off to the best possible start for Illawarra, with the club winning their first bit of silverware in their history. They won the 1992 Two East Challenge Cup final, which was the pre-season competition before the season began, and they defeated Brisbane four points to two in the final, which was played at Apex Oval in double. The club defeated Parramatta, South Sydney and Cronulla to make the final. They were not tipped to beat Brisbane in the decider, but they did so and it served as a springboard for the rest of their season. The 92 season got off to a patchy start for Illawarra. In round one, they had a 14 all draw with Newcastle. This was followed by a 12 points to four victory over Canole. However, in round three, they suffered a humiliating defeat being defeated by the wooden spooners from the previous season, the Gold Coast Seagulls, 18 points to eight. But that's when the form started to pick up the club defeated the grand finalists from the previous season in convincing fashion, Canberra 29 points to 10. They also had good wins over Manly, Brisbane and Western Suburbs who back in those days were quite a competitive side and they had a narrow loss to Penrith in round 5 who were the defending premiers from the previous year. At the midway point of the season the club sat third on the table and then there was a bit of a break where on the 8th of June 1992 they played against the Tour and Great Britain side at the Wollongong Showground where they lost 11 points to 10 in front of 10,000 supporters. In the second half of the season, the club would continue to do what they did in the first half and they would record six victories in their last nine matches to finish in third place on the table. In between those victories, they recorded wins over Manly, the defending Penrith, Penrith and they also defeated a good Newcastle side and Eastern Suburbs and Parramatta. The club's first ever finals match would be the major preliminary semi-final against St George at the Sydney Football Stadium. In this match, Illawarra would win 18 points to 16 with two tries from Alan McIndoe and one try from Paul McGregor sealing a famous victory. This would earn Illawarra a grand final qualifier the following week against Brisbane at a near sellout Sydney football stadium. In this match, Illawarra tried their best but they fell short against Brisbane, losing 22 points to 12, which meant that they would once again have to play St George in the preliminary final to see who would meet Brisbane in the grand final. In the preliminary final against St George, which was played in front of nearly 39,000 fans at the Sydney Football Stadium. Illawarra were every chance of making their first ever grand final. However, with a combination of bad luck and things just not going their way, they would lose the match four points to nil, with the only try of the match coming to St George's Ricky Wolford. The match was also remembered for the fact that Illawarra had three disallowed tries, and in large periods of the match they were actually the better side on the field so Illawarra were very unlucky not to meet their first grand final against Brisbane which they would have had every chance of being competitive in. 
Following on from this, in 1993 the club missed the finals and they would not be at the finals again until 1997 where it were a split competition between the ERL and the Super League. Illawarra would play against the Gold Coast Chargers in the first week of the finals at Parramatta Stadium where they were eliminated and that would be the last time that they would be at the finals. Head coach Graham Murray would depart the club at the end of the 1995 season and despite having the likes of Paul McGregor, Rod Wishart, John Simon, Sean Timmons, Trent Barrett, the club was never able to recapture the magic that they had in the 1992 New South Wales Rugby League season. After the Super League war had concluded and the competition become known as the NRL what we have today, there was a controversial criteria put in place which would mean that by the end of the 1999 season, 22 teams would have to become 14 teams for the 2000 NRL season. Despite having a lot of local talent and some good players, Illawarra was struggling financially and in 1998 they come in 12th. As time went on, it would be more and more clear to everyone that Illawarra would not survive the call at the end of the 99 season and would either have to merge with someone, form a joint venture or die. St George who were safe from the criteria but also wanted to confirm their status in the 2000 NRL season decided to form the first ever joint venture at the end of the 1998 NRL season when the NRL offered clubs over 7 million Australian dollars to form a partnership. So at the end of 1998 Illawarra ceased to exist and formed a joint venture with St George to become St George Illawarra. The Illawarra club today operate in a small capacity with the club only feeling sides in the SG Ball and Harold Matthews teams. The Illawarra side of the joint venture no longer exists with the Wynn Corporation buying out Illawarra's part of the joint venture because Illawarra could not financially support it any longer. Although St George continue to play home matches at Wollongong, I feel that there's very little recognition that the club places on the Illawarra side of the joint venture and it's mainly focused on St George. I've talked about that in previous videos, but that is me review of the 1992 Illawarra Steelers season, the retro season review of that year. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comment section below and let me know your memories of Illawarra in that 1992 and New South Wales Rugby League season. Thanks to everyone that's recently subscribed to the channel and has been watching my videos recently. i got some more videos coming out in the future. But anyways, this is Ruby League History and I'll catch us all later in the next video. Alright, tally bye for now.